What's up my friends? Today we are putting in light poles. So if you've been kind of keeping track of the videos over the last like four or five months, I've gone through this job showing how we did all the grounding and bonding for a slab, how we dug all the underground, and we had to dig for all of the light poles that are getting hung around this property. So today we actually get to wire up the poles and hang them. So light poles, have to be dug in place. Once they get down to depth, they get what are called sono tubes. They put basically a cardboard tube in place and that's gonna hold all of the concrete that's gonna get poured in here to be the pole base. So pole bases usually stick, I don't know, three to four feet out of the ground, kind of again, depends on what the site level is and everything. And on top of that, you put the pole. So the process of how you prep a pole is you put this sono tube in place, then you build uh, some rebar and put a rebar structure like rings that are all connected inside, and that's gonna keep that concrete really, really hard so it doesn't start cracking and breaking apart. And then you have to put anchor bolts inside of it, and the anchor bolts can be, you know, 18, 24 inches long, usually like a, a one inch bolt, and there's four of them that get put down inside of the sono tube. And then once that's all in, we come and we drive a ground rod either inside of the pole base or just outside of the pole base. And on that note, there's a difference between an equipment grounding conductor and a grounding electrode conductor. So the ground that I'm talking about is a bare ground that gets attached to a ground rod. That is a grounding electrode conductor. That's not the equipment ground. Some people are like, well, why couldn't you just run like a black and a white, you know, out to each pole and then just stick a ground rod in the ground and then it would have a ground. That's not the same ground. When we're talking about a ground, we're always talking about an equipment grounding conductor that comes from a panel somewhere where there's a breaker. So your black, white, and your green need to still go out because those get hooked to the, the actual conductors inside of that pole. Um, the actual grounding electrode conductor is a separate conductor that is run to specifically a grounding electrode. Now, some people argue, oh, you don't need them, it's stupid, they don't actually do anything. Some people are like for them, super against them. Um, either way, we had an inspector and in our area, we do have to ground every single one of them. Um, sometimes they have to go overboard and go crazy with CAD welding. Sometimes they let us just put a ground clamp on them or an acorn or something like that. In our case, the inspector wanted us to CAD weld every single one of these. They actually wanted us to put rigid conduit in every one of the bases as well, rather than just putting PVC in. So it was a little bit more of a pain and then to not have to worry about threading all the ends and everything, we actually just put junction boxes outside of the pole bases. So all we had to do is just run some wire inside each uh, one of the pole bases once they're all hung, rather than having to try to pull all this wire and everything because each run goes from pole to pole. So we got all of our stuff CAD welded, we got all the grounds put in everything, and then all the bases were poured. Usually the people that are doing the concrete pouring are the ones that are setting the anchor bolts. So in my situation, I always make these concrete companies some templates. That way when the anchor bolts are set in place and then they dump all this concrete, the bolts don't get all kicked over. I've had a number of times in the past where they've messed them up so badly that we couldn't even mount the pole. Um, so they had to drive new anchors in them. So to avoid that, I always make a square template with a round hole in the middle, and that allows the conduit to go up through that hole, and then I make four more holes exactly precisely where I want those bolts to stick up. And then they put that template over the top of everything after they pour to make sure once it all dries that those things are sticking as straight up as possible. Now the other thing we gotta understand is as things dry, a lot of times things just cure and settle weird, even with a template. So you will usually still have to sit and bang and hammer on those anchors to get them to be straight. I usually put a nut over the threads. I don't bang on the threads with a hammer because you end up messing up the threads. So I usually put a nut over the threads and then I take a hammer and I bang them over to where they are straight. Next thing we had to do was prep each one of the poles. They come as just a pole and then they'll come like a separate pallet full of heads because you can match any kind of head on any kind of pole pretty much. So these are specifically LED heads. Nobody's using high pressure sodium or anything like that anymore. Pretty much everybody's using LED now. So we fed a whole bunch of THH in, you know, black, white, green in every single one of the poles. Uh, we got all of the heads attached to the poles, made sure that the wire that we ran up through the poles that we terminated to the heads and then got them all together as one assembly so that we could lift them up in the air and set them on the base. Already wired and ready to rip. 
So the next thing that I did was I grabbed a telehandler or a forklift, people just call it a forklift. So I used a strap that was a 5,000 pound rated strap. These things are probably like weigh 500 pounds, you know, fully assembled. Um, so I have this really thick strap that I wrapped around him and then I slid my fork through the strap and lifted him up and got them really high up in the air and kind of carried them over and set them down. And I went a few inches above the pole before actually setting it down because I had two guys on the ground that were making sure that the actual bolt pattern was gonna match. They had to take the ground wire that we put down in the, the, the base when they were pouring it, make sure that that gets stuffed up there too. Um, so when this thing slides down, the ground wire is able to stick out of the little handhole that comes on all of these poles. Once we set it down, we, we just barely set it down, make sure everything's gonna match. They have, might have to adjust the screws and bang on them a little bit more just to get everything to sit perfectly and for that pole to drop down on those anchors. I very slowly and very carefully with nobody's fingers in the way, lowered that pole down and then we got it to set on the bottom set of nuts. So in this situation, there was kind of a funny thing that happened. Not actually funny, but it's funny now. There's actually two sets of nuts and washers. They embedded one set in the concrete. So you're supposed to have one set of nuts that are above the concrete, and that's what you twist, and you kind of raise them and lower them, and that's what levels your pole. Then there's another set that goes on top of the plate for the pole, and that's what cinches the, the, the pole down. So the top is just to keep them tight so the pole doesn't fall. The ones on the bottom are what we use to level with. So I'm gonna have to go buy more nuts now because the, he embedded all of those in concrete. So always make sure you talk to your concrete guy before they pour so that they know that. So got new nuts, got everything set down on the bottom. Most of them are like horribly crooked. Once we got the plate at the bottom of the pole base on, put the top nuts and washers on, and then we started tightening them. The way I do it is I always take two levels, two magnetic levels, I put a level on the side, level on the front, and that way it makes sure as you're tightening everything, you can kind of see if it's leaning one way or the other and you just work your way all the way around. Once you get it level, just tighten each one, one at a time and make sure that that thing is not moving anywhere. Then there's always a plastic uh, set of base covers. So on these poles, you put these little plastic covers so everything is nice and covered on the bottom and then there's usually a cap that you have to put on the top. And then the next thing that we did was get all of the runs, the underground runs between each pole wired. Uh, the, the property's not ready, there's not actually power there yet, but because this is alongside such a busy highway, uh, the builder asked like, we need to get these on temporary power. I wanna get a photo cell or something so that this thing is lit up at night because we keep having a problem with people driving by stealing stuff. So we got everything wired and ready to go. Um, so now we're waiting for the meter to get set on our T-pole so that we can actually energize everything and get these lights burning. So let me know how you guys do your light poles, what kind of equipment you prefer using, what kind of weird things that you've come across. And if you want to watch more about this job specifically, I did a video, you can click here to watch about the grounding and bonding of a slab. Or you can click here if you wanna watch a video about the whole underground that we had to spend weeks digging. Love you crazy people, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.